Okay, um, just a little video which you should be able to find on scribing in the top filler that you can see above me here. Same principles apply um, when scribing a filler in anywhere. So when we design the furniture, all the units are made to measure. We normally allow a nominal 40 millimetres here. Now, in reality, with the skirting board and whatever shape the walls may be, whatever angles they may be, it might be 23 millimetres here, it might be 47 here, or it is what it is. This side here is straight and we want to infill it with the filler and we want this straight side to be against here. So we need to cut the shape of that wall on this infill piece, um, cut the waste away and then have a piece that fits in here. Now, the key here is that the furniture has all been made um, perfectly square, is dead vertical, um, it's been levelled on the legs, so we know this side is vertical here. So, this piece here is the same width as the, the infill. If we've supplied you with this bedroom, then we will supply you with two of these, one for each side. So you can cut one infill off each side uh, and throw the waste away. But you can also, before you cut it, mark this one and mark one at the other end of the room as well. Um, that just gives you two bites at the cherry if, you, if you're a bit worried about getting it right. So, if we were cutting this piece to fit in here, it'd be quite simple. We could just measure that, whatever that would be, 42 millimetres, mark 42 millimetres, cut it. We could offer this up and we could mark it on here. We could cut that. And if we want this straight edge over that distance, we could just spin that round and, and fit it in here. So what we want to do is, is cut off the difference between this space here and what's left here. So easy to do on a small piece. On a longer piece, is not so easy. So the way, the foolproof and simple way to do this, I've cut this filler here. Uh, it actually sits just underneath the cornice here in this case, but it, it could go to the ceiling. If it went to the ceiling, and this is a tall ceiling here, a lot of ceilings are, you know, modern houses are, are this sort of height. So you can cut the infill here a fraction, just half a millimetre or so too long, so that you can just spring it in and jam it up against the ceiling so it sits there. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is actually just put a piece of duct tape on here to hold this on uh, in a second. So, the foolproof way of doing it, you want the offcut off the end of this infill, or cut a piece the same width. You line this edge up here with the outer edge of the carcass. So this edge, line it with the outer edge here, all the way up. So you would line it up at the bottom here, where the shelf is. Bear in mind this panel could have a little bit of bow in it, which will be pulled up straight when we put the filler on. So make sure it lines up where the bottom shelf is here, and at the top here, so we'll get that so it lines up perfectly. We then take this piece of, I'll turn it around so you can see it, this offcut of the filler, and we follow that down the wall here, and we mark this line here. This piece is the piece we want, with this straight edge to fit up against this edge. This piece here will be the waste that we'll cut away. And this line, if we take this piece down here, will follow the shape of that wall, so when we cut it, we've got the shape of that wall marked onto here. This piece drops into the gap, uh, and this piece is the waste. So, as I say, if we've supplied you two of these, you can mark before you cut it, because this method won't work once you've only got half a filler left. Um, you can mark this side, and you've actually got enough to take this to the other end of the room and mark that side, and then cut them both at once. So, uh, I will take that on and continue in a second. So, uh, I've got this oversized filler here. I've got it set up so it's absolutely flush with the edge here and absolutely flush there. It is actually flush all the way down, but this side panel can, it's, it's a panel material that can have a very slight bow in it. So, it's these key points here where nothing's going to move. Top and bottom where it needs to be lined up. So this is the off cut off the end. It's exactly the same width as that. So we can now take this piece here. So the 
muscle is tightened against that edge. So this piece is the waist. This is a piece we want. This is a nice factory cut edge cut on a CNC router. It's dead straight, dead square. This edge will sit in the gap against the carcass side. This piece will fit exactly in there. So, down at skirting board level, just check again that's still flush. Skirting board, you can see there, skirting boards often sit at a, a bit of a funny angle to the wall, so we can scribe that, that straight part there. The different features on this skirting, I like to just take a level and just mark the significant points. So, top of the skirting, I'll mark that point just there, just with a little level. Oops. Sorry, I'll read that again. This point here, the little bulge there. You might find it easy to do this with a on the little needle scribing gauges that you can get. So these points, these lines refer to these points here. So I'm going to use my compass to do the. I'm going to set the compass up to the the line that we've drawn. Um, now you may ask why don't I use a compass to scribe the main line? And you can do, but the reason is, and I'll come in a bit. So if you bring the curb compass here. It relies on it being absolutely at right angles, perpendicular to the surface you're scribing from. And I'll exaggerate, but if you, as you come down, you twist that and waggle it, you'll end up with a line that isn't true to the line that uh, you're trying to scribe to. The offcut is foolproof. Trust me, I'm a bedroom fitter. Perhaps if you use it the right way around. Okay, so I now set the compass to the line that we've marked with the block. And then keeping it level, mark the shape. Oops. And again, if you don't keep it dead level, you don't get the right shape. So I'm going to artistically just draw that in a little. That's a nice round bulge there. And then, but we know where these points correspond. And then this piece just comes in here. So I say, if you've got one of those little profile needle gauges from B&Q or somewhere, um, that will make this a little less hit and miss. So this is a waste. This is a bit we want. And just to labour the point yet again, you have got room to scribe the infill for the other end of the room uh, out of this side, but you need to do it before you cut this while you've still got this intact and you can still use this method. Okay, I'm going to cut it and we'll see if it fits. So just to demonstrate the point here, this is the filler that you just saw me mark out and uh, I've taken to the other end of the room and I've marked the opposite end so there's actually room to get both fillers out of this one piece it just means that if you do make a mistake um, which could happen to the best of us then you actually have got we'll provide you with a filler a complete filler for each end this means that you've actually got uh, a little bit spare so a Note on jigsaws, a uh, little reminder. Um, we mark on the serve, on the face and we cut from the face and we do that because the blades we use in the jigsaw are called down cut blades and they're called that because they cut downwards. So a conventional jigsaw blade will have the teeth pointing upwards and um, the blade will have a motion 
sort of rotating upwards like this and your good side will be on the back and your um, rough side will be on the face. We don't want that, we mark on the face, we cut on the face so we use down cut blades. Um, you can get them in um, DIY stores, very often the people who work there don't know they exist so you might have to hunt for them yourself um, but they generally are there. Um, don't mix them up with blades called fine cut blades, uh, sometimes um, because of a neutral rate with the, the teeth just facing straight off. Uh, have your jigsaw setting, you'll have settings on most jigsaws uh, to give you a pendulum action. With a down cut blade you want the blade just going vertically straight up and down which on this jigsaw is that setting there. Um, and the consequence of the blades cutting down on a conventional blade, as the blade cuts, it pulls the tool onto the work surface. With down cut blades, it's trying to push the tool off the work surface. So you need to put plenty of firm pressure onto the work as you cut it to stop the tool bouncing up and down.